Greetings my comrades and welcome back to Zonalith. In today's video I wanted to talk about the Pokemon DLC since the first part of the DLC, the Isle of Armor, is very close to releasing. Um, now I've really just been playing a lot of Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, amazing game, review is going to be coming out in a few weeks time, but this will be a nice thing, new thing to play. Um, instead of Xenoblade, because I've been playing a lot of that game, so something new and different to play would be a really nice change of pace. However, I definitely do think that the DLC for Pokemon is going to be great. Um, I'm really excited for it. Um, Pokemon Sword and Shield was a game I fairly enjoyed. I had a few criticisms with it that weren't involved in the national decks that never really affected me, but I did have a few criticisms with the game, but overall it was a very fun and solid game. The Pokemon DLC is an expansion, um, including the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra that adds new content to the vanilla versions of Sword and Shield that includes new Pokemon like Galarian, Moltres, Articuno, Zapdos, Regielectric, and um, the other one, I forget its name on the top of my head, or whether that be newly discovered um, Pokemon that are re-entering the Galar Pokedex such as Lycanroc, Emolga, and Crocodile. Um, there's also going to be some new stories and two new open areas, um, obviously they're the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra. The DLC pack is only about 30 bucks and, and includes um, a bunch of new information and stuff and the Isle of Armor, the first part, is going to be coming out June 17th, so I'm actually very excited for this. However, once I started looking at the DLC, a couple thoughts came into my head. The first thought was, Pokemon really hasn't innovated its formula since it really began. We've always had the new generation game, a third version that makes pretty much a definitive edition of that generation, and then maybe a remake if we're lucky for that generation. However, this time, they're not going to be giving us that third game. They're not going to be giving us Pokemon Gun or whatever it was going to be called. They're going to be giving us the DLC, the expansion pass. So that made me beg the question. Is this going to be a thing from now on? Is this going to be the norm? Um, is Pokemon going to be doing DLC for every generation um, from Generation 8 onwards? And so that's where I'm going to ask the question today. Not only if DLC is going to be the norm from now on, but if it's a better alternative than, say, a third version slash definitive edition or sequel games such as Pokemon Black and White 2. And that's what we're going to be discussing in today's video. If you guys have any other different opinions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and we can get into a really cool discussion down there. Again, my name is Ben Zonalin, and please enjoy the video. So what we're first going to be talking about is the Definitive Edition games, the Pokemon Emerald, the Platinum, those kind of games. Um, first of all, what makes DLC better? Well, DLC is cheaper than any Pokemon game, even the old ones. The DS games were 40 bucks. this is 30 um, And I also wanted to ask you a question. Third versions have more content, however most of the game is just a copy and paste of the original generation games with some extra content. Normally a larger post game and a story that revolves around the third legendary of the region, such as Rayquaza and Emerald or Garatina and Platinum. They really don't have a third legendary for Sword and Shield since Eternatus was already a very major part of the story in Sword and Shield, so if they were to do a definitive edition, I would probably guess they would just make up a legendary. However, the DLC has all that new content that people really want to consume, and is probably more um, content than you can get in any post-game Pokemon can get besides maybe Heart Gold and Soul Silver. because, I mean, come on. They gave us an entire region, guys. They, you really can't top that. The DLC is cheaper than the third version and still has the content that people really pay attention to, that being the juicy, juicy post-game that normally has a lot of cool new content and new places to explore. However, third versions are also a refined game of the original. Um, say we got a Pokemon gun and it changed a lot of things that were criticized in the OG Sword and Shield, plus adding the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra to the post-game, that would arguably be an amazing game. However, this does not help people um, save an extra 60 bucks. Um, but the DLC helps people save an extra 60 bucks and still gives us that post-game content that people really want. However, I do agree it should have just been in Sword and Shield from the start. This content should have just been in Sword and Shield, plain and simple. The post-game was very lackluster in that game, and I feel like we shouldn't have to pay so much money just to get the post-game we really deserved in Sword and Shield. 
Next, I want to talk about sequels, like Pokemon Black and White 2. Um, pretty much just Pokemon Black and White 2, that's the only time we've gotten sequels. But again, it is also kind of like a third version, since it did revolve around Kiram. However, they did change a lot of stuff. I would personally really love to see sequels to Sword and Shield. The region has so many great characters, and the potential to craft a unique sequel story that follows up a rather bland story from the original Gen 8 games would be honestly something I would really like to see. Because again, Galar had so much potential and had probably some of the best characters in the entire series since, say, Black and White. Because X and Y and Sun and Moon, they all had some pretty good characters, specifically Sun and Moon, they had a lot of good characters. But Sword and Shield, in my opinion, has one of the best foundation of characters that we've seen in a while. And I feel like a sequel story would be a really interesting standpoint to go into. And maybe we can go more into the lore of Galar and less of, oh look, the gym challenge, oh look, the gym challenge, oh look, the gym challenge. However, would a sequel be better from an unbiased standpoint? Um, that's what we're gonna have to discuss. Although, similar to Pokemon Black and White 2, they could redo some of the areas of the region to implicate a time skip. Um, however, they would still pretty much use the same region, and yes, they can add extra content, but there's only so much you can do while limited to one generation. They can't just uh, say, oh yeah, this is in Galar now because, um, reasons. They can't just add a plot of land and add it to the beginning part of the region. That really wouldn't make sense unless it has something to do revolving around the story, and I don't really think they want to do the whole, oh look, new land thing, because they already did that in Gen 3 with Groudon. Um, however, a sequel to Sword and Shield would be great. It could provide a better story that doesn't just revolve around the gym challenge, like I said before. However, it definitely seems likely that DLC, again, saves people money and saves time for those who don't really want to replay through the same region again to get to the new content, because a lot of people are always like, yeah, I like the third version, it makes things better. However, the thing that really stood out to me was the new content at the end of the game, after I beat the champion. That was the stuff that really stood out to me personally, and the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra literally is just saying, here, take the content you guys really want, and yeah, that's what I think is going to be the best selling point for the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra. You're not spending another 60 bucks to play essentially the same game, um, but in this case, it's with a different story, but essentially it's the same region, just with the new content. And I feel like if people just want the new content, um, people are going to be more likely to want to buy DLC. So, what is my conclusion to all this? Well, I actually think, from an unbiased standpoint, because I really do want um, Sword and Shield sequels, DLC is probably the best option. Again, it saves people's money, it gives people the content they want, and it provides probably the best experience they can give, and a better experience than third version games, because a lot of people criticize those for being way too similar to the original, just besides a few content here and there. Now, third versions are great, and I'll be kind of sad to see them go, but honestly, I believe DLC would definitely be better than those. However, some sequels would be nice. So, in conclusion, DLC is the better option. DLC should be the norm going forward for Pokemon, and it is a better better alternative than third version to last definitive editions and um, sequel games. So guys, that's going to be it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications so you're informed when I upload my next video. Here on this channel, we merely talk about Nintendo content and some other video games sprinkled here and there. Um, I'm hoping to cover a lot of the games that get revealed in the PlayStation thing, and that's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. However, if you guys want to join me for my journey, please subscribe and share this video with family and friends to get them to come along and join us here. Again, this is been Zonolith, and thank you for clicking on today's video, and I'll catch you guys later.